it up for the Rolling Stones. So you got to share some stories, some experience of doing that, because that, that's, that's as big as you get. By their majesty's request, in fact. They, uh, <laughs> really? Yeah, man, we were requested. Oh, that's cool. We were, yeah, our presence was, my presence had been requested. It's amazing how they're, they're so British. It's uh, <laughs> startling. Alert the media. The Rolling Stones are so British. Um, just a very, they have a very proper way of just doing things and referring to things. And I had a, a mutual friend. He was a great friend of Charlie's and of Keith's and oh, Ronnie's. Wow. And he had been a childhood chum of theirs they were all collecting records and listening to blues at the same time clive went into art and he became a great archivist and record collector and had written some great stuff about early records and early american blues and things like that so he was quite a scholarly cat and he lived in toronto he was quite a bit older than me hmm. and sort of took me under his wing as this great friend and benefactor oh, wow. and believe me that guy he paid my rent some months and oh, he nice. gave me guitars to play when i had no guitars <laughs> he gave me all his old records when he converted over to to digital like when <laughs> he burned everything onto cds yeah, yeah. he gave me all his old vinyl which as a result you know, you hear Keith Richards talking about Chuck Berry and the early Chuck Berry records and yeah, how yeah. he learned everything from old Bo Diddley records and Chuck Berry records, and those were like his Bible. I have those pages from the Bible in my house oh, because cool. Clive ended up with all the records because he was the archivist. Oh, wow. He ended up with everyone's records when the Stones no longer lived in England and they were moving all about and they were, no one had their stuff in one place anymore. You weren't going to leave it at your mom and dad's. Clive ended up with all the records. So as a result, I probably have the piece of vinyl that Keith learned to play O'Carroll from. I have the vinyl that they listened to and said, this may be the last time. Oh, that's a great idea for a song. I have those records, the actual vinyl. That's cool. That those dudes, again, it, it's a story that doesn't sound true. How I end up at the crossroads of rock know, and roll history, yeah. I don't know. But I have those records and I know it doesn't sound true, but... When I was in Australia on tour with Satriani, we were in Melbourne. The Stones were in Melbourne. And after our show, we were hanging out in the dressing room at the theater, and Keith's guitar tech came in, who's quite a bit of a celebrity in his own right. He's, you know, the richest yeah, sure. guitar player in the world's guitar tech. The guitar tech, he, yeah. he, you know, he prepares the man for the throne every night. He's like, he's the dude, right? He, Pierre hooks Keith's world up. And I'd met... Pierre, because we played shows with him and, you know, I met Pierre on a number of occasions and I didn't assume he remembered me. It had been years and we're in Australia. I mean, I don't expect to see a dude, you know, from yeah. a gig in Toronto. Huh. So uh, I walked up to Pierre and I said, oh, hey, Pierre, man, it, it, it's Gordy Johnson, the big sugar. Listen, man, I, I don't know if you remember me. And he just looked at me and went, where are the records? <laughs> Where are the records? My boss wants to know. Where are the records? <laughs> I was like, your boss should know. You're never going to see them records on eBay. <laughs> Those records are never going on any. They're not going to no record shows. Those will never be sold or traded or nothing. Yeah. Those records, all he's got to do is make the call, and then he gets the records back. That's just that's just how it's going to be. There's no. He doesn't trade me something for them. That's yeah, yeah. I don't own them. I'm just, I'm having them. I'm, right. I'm the keeper of the, the curator. I'm the keeper of the prized yeah. thing. So if at any point that becomes important to somebody, then they'll get them back. But I thought that was <laughs> just when you thought you'd been forgotten there on the yeah. periphery, the guy's guitar tech, it's all he had to say to me, where are the records? Are the records? <laughs> oh shit. Cool. I better take care of them records. So what was that tour like? Which one? Well, opening up. The Stones or the yeah. or the Satriani? No. <laughs> they were both the, really cool. <laughs> the Stones, come on. The Stones was amazing because I think it was because Charlie asked to have us. Charlie was a fan. Yeah. And I'd met Charlie on a number of occasions. And whenever the Stones would come to town to rehearse to Toronto, which yeah, is they where did they, that a lot. Right. they did all their staging and, and, and set up their tours from Toronto. Whenever they were around, I would get the call. You never knew when. Um, your presence has been requested. You, you've been asked to, to, to come around like, Oh, let's go. Is it? Okay. Well, <laughs> cool. 
So I'd go down to the Masonic and go up and it, it was worse than airport security. I mean, after 9-11, remember yeah. airport security used to just be like, yeah. you'd show you, you know, your ticket and walk through. All yeah. of a sudden there's like full body pat down and going through a metal detector and stuff to get into a Rolling Stones rehearsal. It was so like, cool. And it, who are you here to see? I was like, <laughs> uh, I'm a friend of Charlie. Charlie who? I was like, uh, he's this well-dressed little Englishman. He plays the drums sometimes. You might have seen him around. Which Charlie who? The fuck? So... <laughs> I got this like interrogation. Oh, I went man. to secondary. I had to sit in a chair. Well, yeah, this guy school, like right. kind of roughed me up and gave me the once over. And like, no, who was it exactly again? You said you were here to see. I'm like, oh <laughs> God. And then there his self, Charlie walked by. I was like, oh Gordy, I'm sorry, mate. I'll let him go. He's all right. And he just <laughs> walked so me incredible. through the curtain. So I got to go behind the curtain and sit next to Charlie. I sat on the drum riser next to Charlie's hi-hat and his people would just bring us little cups of espresso after every go around of a song. They would, would, would you like, would you like another coffee? I just figured, you know, okay, you guys, you guys go on now, get your shit off, go. No, you were part, no. you were at rehearsals. Yeah, we got to, I, get, I got to go to rehearsal. Holy cow. That's way better I than I thought. Hanging around at rehearsal and, you know, you'd see them, parade people through there i saw the black crows came walking through there one day wow. who i would later become great friends, friends with i yeah, didn't know yeah. chris at the time but here's a guy with a large feather in his yeah. <laughs> cowboy hat wearing a velvet poncho or something i was like oh that looks like chris uh you know you'd see these people paraded through there but i didn't do that i sat Charlie yeah, we, just, you're we loved to con- <laughs> we, we, he loved to converse and we would talk about Mark Chagall and we would talk about the finest leather brogan shoes you could have. And we talked about different fashion designers and oh God, automobile yeah. design. We talked about the Gullwing Mercedes and Charlie had a Gullwing Mercedes. I'm like, wow. <laughs> what's it like? What's that car like to drive? Well, I don't know, mate. I don't drive. <laughs> you have a Gullwing Mercedes. But you don't, but you don't drive. Think about that. What did you pay? Was it a $180,000 car? Was it a half a million dollar car now? The Rolling Stones, man. You don't drive. Well, no, from the early days, they always had someone to come around and fetch us. Fetch did us. you? Oh, dear. Uh, okay. So, so were yeah. you playing uh, stadiums? Or was it, it must have been. Yeah, we played stadiums. at the, uh, I think it was the Air Canada Center. Was the well, game. that's an arena. Sky Dome or Air Canada? Yeah, it was Sky Air Dome Canada was the, yeah, yeah. we played. But it was because Charlie asked for us. Charlie asked us to come around. And I had a couple of run-ins with Keith, and Keith was a big sugar fan. He had Hemivision, oh, cool. and they'd all heard of 500 pounds. And Charlie cool loved the that? jazz. Charlie loved Al Cross, and he loved yeah, Rafa, yeah. and he loved our jazzy reggae thing. He loved that. So he asked for us to be on the gig, I understand. Yeah. And yeah, so, wow, cool. the, we got the Rolling Stones gig. Unbelievable. Of course, there's a lot of other machinations that happened for yeah. our agent, obviously, had to get involved in our label. There's, it's never in, as easy as that. Wow. But so yeah. to everyone's credit, we got on the gig and you expect it to be. So how many shows did you do? Just one. Oh, it's just the Toronto get, one. Okay. Just get on, play, get off, get your shit out of the way. Don't yeah. look at anybody. Don't yeah. talk to anybody. It wasn't like that. Yeah. It wasn't like that. They the biggest special, rock and roll right? band in the world made us feel like the big, what they made us well, yeah, feel like. You were at the friggin' like, rehearsals. Mick, Mick has Persian rugs all over, all over the stage. Do you lads want us to roll those up or do you want them left? <laughs> I, I guess you could. Leave them? Leave them, I guess. <laughs> uh, this will be your video director who runs the, the videos on the Jumbotron. Do you want to have a brief word with him? Like, what? We get to use the thing? It's like, but if you have a great show, we have a great show, mate. Um, oh, we're great. worried about being too loud. They're like, mm, no, not likely. <laughs> you can play as loud as the Rolling Stones. You can't be louder than the Rolling Stones. <laughs> oh, fair enough. But they didn't. I mean, we played shows with bands who were our equals and contemporaries. Yeah, yeah. And their sound guy would try to put gaff tape on the faders. Yeah, 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 so you yeah, couldn't yeah. turn. I was like, sure. no, we're not going to get in that pissing Make match. It all we're all professionals. So it sounds no, like man. They gave you the full lights. Full sound, just oh, don't go great. louder than, than us. Yeah. And you got the keys to the kingdom. Oh, by the way, catering's this way. Help yourself to the champagne. Ah, good for don't you, touch man. the shepherd's pie <laughs> until Keith had his fill. 
Once Keith's had the shepherd pie, dig in. But if you break the crust, you're out. It'll be an evening with. There'll be no opening act. Don't, Pasco, do Don't not collect your 200 crust. bucks. Don't break the crust on the shepherd's pie. But you're not, you're meant to walk around and have a good time. You're playing rock and roll, mate. You're playing on a show with the Rolling okay, Stones. It's all right Gordy. to smile. It's all right to smile. That's a song title. Don't break the crust. <laughs> But you're you're encouraged to like be having a good be seen having a good time. It's the Rolling Stones. Who has a who has a better time? Who yeah. has more fun playing rock and roll the Rolling Stones? Yeah. So all right off the bat, you're like, okay, but you're still nervous as hell because like it's the Rolling Stones we're playing with. And somebody came to our dressing room and said, uh, you know, your presence has been requested. And they took me and Gary back around to meet Char- to say hi to Charlie. Charlie wanted to say hi to us before the show. What? <laughs> you got, you remembered. He's like, yes, he remembered. So we got to hang out with Charlie and then he came to our dressing room and met everybody. We got a picture taken with the Rolling Stones. Everybody got a hang. It was like, they really went to the farthest degree to wow. treat you like what a story. equals. And so, what to a which to story. my mind is after that, Anytime we're playing with a band who act like a bunch of dicks, yeah, yeah, you can tell I kind of feel like saying, hey, by the way, <laughs> the Rolling Stones aren't dicks. What is your deal? What is your deal? Would you just calm down? <laughs> These are the greatest, uh, here, our greatest heroes in the world. And they're I, totally cool. And uh, like I said, I'm fortunate, you know. 